final week of the regular season and playoff spots are up for grabs. See if perennial powerhouses earn their position with our games today. Here we see Dardock making his way into the studio with Hooney in tow. Big test for them today against Team Liquid. Smithy and Poe Belter getting ready in their ready room. Another shot of Poe Belter here looking pretty relaxed before his game today. Just checking out the peripherals, getting some last minute prep. Of course, stage ready, camera ready. Makeup is important for these guys to look clean. Yep. Especially All right, if they're, oh, we got to check that hair. Hey, I know yeah. that life. I know the hair life. Hey. Oh, a little bit of a look into Poe Belter's morning routine. It's gotta important have a mind to read. Hey, too. Yeah. 200 IQ, man. Bigger you got to feed that brain. And then, of course, yeah. you got to feed yourself. A yeah. nice, healthy, fruit-filled breakfast for Poe Belter. That'll and these aren't, uh, these aren't at the studio anymore. Absolutely so not. Oh, and a shot of him on his way home at the end of the day. And oh, oh we got caught. We got abort. Abort. I mean, I'm glad we're so thorough. It yeah, you just want to know every thorough. single pregame ritual a player could ever have. We've really stepped up our investigative yep. game here on the NALCS. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NALCS Countdown, where for 30 minutes we teach you how to fold a sheet of paper and go over some of the surprises from the split until the timer reaches zero and we jump into Champions Select. Time to see what teams have to face today in our schedule, presented by Jersey Mike Subs. First up, Echo Fox hopes to secure their position in the top six versus Team Liquid. Then 100 Thieves aim to do the same against Cloud9 with Optic and TSM fighting for sixth place in game three, where Captain Flowers will be hitting up the NALCS Lounge with a narrow and Prowly on Riot Games 2. If you're looking for a sub above during our games, visit jerseymikes.com. We're using the promo code JMNALCS. Pairs your meal with in-game content like skins or Hextech chess. Now, if we look at how the teams are ranked, plenty can still fluctuate within the teams fighting for a spot in playoffs. Currently, only Team Liquid and 100 Thieves have a place in the postseason with their positions among the top six still in flux. While Cloud9, Echo Fox, FlyQuest, TSM, and Optic all fight for their chance to compete in Oakland with our games today. Yeah, and it's just crazy how much is still on the line dash. The fact that the third seeded team could still miss the playoffs entirely. We have a 43% chance of having three or more tiebreaker games. It's it's crazy. It's absolutely Yeah, nuts. you just gotta make sure you keep on your dailies, uh, get the as right. To level up your artifact level and Mark. make sure you have. Hmm? Hello. Oh, yeah. The grind's got to be on pause for about five hours. It's tough to turn down. About five hours, man. That's all I have. Scratch that itch. Really glad to have you on the desk with me, Mark. I'm here to help. Oh, my goodness. His mind is poisoned. Anyway, no, no. With the potential of tiebreakers looming, we called upon the innovations of our stats team to bring back one of the most beloved end of split traditions, rather, the official NALCS Foldy Sheet, TM. But we're stepping it up this split thanks to cutting edge advances in NALCS technology. We are now bringing you the Foldy Sheet in augmented reality. This is way better than the EU Foldy Sheet, I must say, because it's eight games worth of folds. Yeah, you said that. It's also two stories all the way to the floor, That's ladies like and gentlemen. A 40 foot Foldy That's Sheet. That's a very big Foldy Sheet. And you at home can play along with us. Head over to at LOL Esports' Twitter page and download your very own Foldy Sheet. Then, as we move through the schedule, simply fold and fold and fold and fold your sheet to see what scenarios are still left in play. Let's take a look who's winning the NALCS, boys! I mean, they're just folding up constantly. Yeah, yeah. but according to this, yeah. TSM does not make playoffs. Yeah. Ooh, and we get a three-way tie for first in that one. That's All right, well, cool. that's just one of the many possibilities we have. In the event, though, that the folds show, we have three or more tiebreakers. We will be adding a tiebreaker show day on Monday to give players and teams the necessary time to prep and battle for their spots in playoffs. Yeah, I mean, we saw EU, I think, officially has uh, an extra day as well. We'll see yep. if we uh, match yeah. them. Well, also, EU solves three-way ties differently than NA solves three-way ties based on the rule book. But if anyone really cares about that, they can go to Lolly Sports, go to the About, <laughs> look at the rules like I was doing before the show and figure it out because it's actually really complicated. Yeah, it's very complicated. Taking a look, though, we did kind of break down the probability of the different tiebreaker scenarios. Yeah. Uh, of zero to two, there's a 56.64% chance uh, of that many tiebreaker games versus versus three plus being 43.36. Of course, that's weighting each match as a 50-50. Yeah, no buy is secured yet. Uh, Team Liquid, even though they have a 79% chance of getting first or a tie where they don't even have to have a tiebreaker because they went off head-to-head, -head, there's still a 1.17% chance they finish fourth. The meme that won't die. Even though it's not <laughs> happened a ton of times, you just have to talk about it every single time. So here's what you need. TL needs to go 0-2 this week. Fox needs to go 2-0. And then there's two stipulations. If Golden Guardians beat Fly, C9 then has to 2-0. However, if uh, Fly only beats Golden Guard, or excuse me, if Fly beats Golden Guardians, C9 can either 1-1 one one or 2-0. 100 Thieves still has to be Optic, and uh, that will then force Team Liquid to lose all their tiebreaker games, and that is exactly how you get 
fourth place team would. So there's still a chance. Yeah. But Ladies tell me there's a chance. Pull up your actual foldy sheet. Yeah, all right, we just want to, yeah, we're going to show you guys because we all yeah, have our foldy sheets. Maybe a little bit more. We'll, so we'll break through this all After with one here. game, this so is going to be half the size. That's a good point. That's every game, here. every game, yeah. be half the size of the foldy sheet. If this seems daunting to you, don't worry. We're going to do it with we'll you at the end of every game. We'll walk you through it. It's real simple. We've had years of practice folding these sheets. So I'm confident Mark's had one split. So the challenge to everyone online, if you've gone to Lolly Sports and looked at the foldy sheet, is like tell us which scenario you think is going to happen because there's 256 ones. The reason exactly. there's only eight games on this is two of the games don't actually matter as far as playoff scenarios. Right. Go. It's COD Otherwise, it'd be a much bigger sheet. Clutch and Golden Guardians. Otherwise, it would actually be four times as big just right. adding two games. So, so we, of course, do want to hear from you, but I also want to hear from the two of you. I have asked you guys to pick the scenario of these 256 that you yeah. think we will end the summer split with. So first up, Mark, what's your pick? I'm going with line 220. 220? So if you look oh, at really? that, let, yeah. me flip, let me flip my... All right, this is what it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's over there. If you don't know what 220 is, uh, it's going to be Team Liquid winning the first game, followed by C9, uh, and then it will uh, In be... the big swinger game, you're choosing Optic over TSM. Yeah, Optic That's over the... TSM is the really, really big one. The things behind me is the way that the playoffs will end seeding-wise which will actually mean yeah. C9 is going to get a buy. And Woo! most importantly, TSM not making playoffs because they lose. Well, 220 would have a tiebreaker game between C9 and 100 Thieves right. uh, and a tie that's auto-resolved between Fox and FlyQuest. My prediction was line 252. Okay. And there's actually only one difference uh, in these lines. of that from everything, and it's that game three of today with there TSM versus Optic. And the only difference then would be Optic or TSM uh, making it in the playoffs, I believe. Yeah, Wait a well, second. Who's yeah. Not we're missing 100 Thieves for some reason. Oh, 100 Thieves isn't in there. Blow past that. It's actually about <laughs> TSM or Optic making it in. Yeah. All righty. Well, yeah, that's their picks. Make sure you download that Foldy Sheet over on Twitter and share which scenario you think will come to pass. Now, one of the more impactful games on the playoff picture is that Game 3, Optic versus TSM, that we just talked about. And Power of Evil feels especially fired up to face Bjergsen. I don't know, just for some reason, Destiny has something with me and Bjergsen. There is just something, I'm not sure about what, but it's like it's always me against him and like really deciding matches and or me against TSM. So yeah, it's just gonna be a, a clash again between us and it's gonna be possibly the deciding factor of who goes to playoffs and who doesn't. And I'm pretty confident. I'm starting to really like this rivalry between Power of Evil and Bjergsen. Uh, even to the extra of the fact that Optic is pushing it so hard as well. They sent out a tweet earlier this week talking about what PoE has done to Bjergsen, so to speak. He's knocked him out of an IEM twice. He knocked him out of Worlds last year. They're really playing into it. I believe his all-time record against them uh, as we can see here, is eight and five. But in the NALCS, Bjergsen was actually 2-0 against him in spring. In spring. We even did a Lolly Sports feature of like the PoE versus Bjergsen rivalry, and PoE's all about it. He's right. saying, yeah, this is such a great rivalry. I always beat him, and then Bjergsen's like, yeah, I don't really think it's a rivalry. Like, I have four MVPs, dude. Like, I've really dominated NA for the last four years. Uh, but at the same time, if POE keeps beating him, he's not going to make this go away. Right? And I actually like it, too, because it's making Bjergsen battle on two fronts because everyone's building this narrative that he just doesn't think is real, <laughs> in a sense, where he's like, it's not a big rivalry. And he's talking about that instead of maybe being 100% focused on the game. So maybe a little bit of extra psychological warfare going for the out-of-game. Yeah, absolutely. So. It's drawing a little focus away from the fact that, of the big picture which is just that you're fighting for playoffs here it's less yeah. about this individual matchup in the mid lane but that can definitely plague a player's mind yeah and i think that's the, the big part about this is this is probably the most important game that these guys are going to play maybe the whole year for them because tsm has always made worlds if they don't qualify for playoffs here this will result in a situation where it's almost impossible for tsm to go and there's yeah. only 16 scenarios where optic will beat tsm and then tsm will then make playoffs. Yeah, which and that's is, of the 256. Right, yeah. so that's a pretty small number if they lose this game. And that is including the three- and four-way ties that they'll have to win. So there's 52 scenarios where if TSM beats Optic, they will make it, and Optic can still make the playoffs. So obviously Optic already having the one-up in the head-to-head -head is what gives them those extra uh, yeah. scenarios that they're fine in. That's but the key. That's why it's such a slanted matchup for TSM, because if they don't win this single game, their entire year might come to an end. Optic with the recent win over TSM, mm -hmm. one to zero in the head-to-head. -head. TSM lot. needing to snag this one to even it up. Stakes are set, so now let's take a look at how this matchup might actually play out. Yeah, and I think every time these teams have kind of played against each other in the past, people are thinking that if TSM performs, they'll win, and if TSM makes mistakes, they'll lose. 
but that completely takes away what Optic has to say about it, their agency in the matchup, because they're both eight and eight teams, and Optic in many ways has actually had some more impressive wins than TSM, and they win often through picking more unique champions than the rest of the league. They've picked more split pushers for Dokla than any other team has picked split pushers for their top laner. PoE is often on a strong wave clear champion. I think Arrow is also strong on those longer range, more pokey 80 carries that can stay from afar. And that's how they beat you. They beat you with map control. They beat you by having Dokla having consistent threat in the long game by playing macro. And you could argue that's actually a good matchup against TSM, who's really been about 5v5 team fighting. Yeah, I think the top lane matchup that you kind of hinted at is kind of the pivot point in this whole uh, game, just because they do a lot of interesting things, interesting things in the draft on optics, optics side, where they will leave up the Aatrox, which no one else mm -hmm. is doing, and try and counter pick it, and that puts teams in uncomfortable positions. And for the most part, Hanser has been defaulting into Nar and Cho'Gath and some of his best champions and kind of going back to comfort. And that's the kind of thing that Optic, if they prep well in their draft, can really look to abuse. And you see how different these two guys play. Yeah, you can see Dokla's KDA is very low. That's because he's actually not team fighting often, and you do die when you're setting up these split pushes. But you see the big difference in the turret damage per game. 6.4 thousand damage to turrets per game, almost triple of what Hanser has, who is frequently grouping to team fight on something like Cho'Gath, and even on something like Gnar, which many teams use as a split pusher, right. TSM has more used as a team fighter. Well, so there you have it. A lot of focus on the top lane matchup for that third game of the day. It comes smack dab in the middle of the day, so I want to get your win conditions, though, regardless. Of course, Jat, you have elected for TSM to win the Scenario game based on your prediction. So you have to give me Optic's win conditions. Of course. So I think what Optic wants to do is they secure strong wave clear in the mid and the bottom lane. They pick a stronger split pushing champion. They have blue sides, so they won't always have counter picks. Sometimes that has to be a power pick. And because of that, you then split the map to your top side. You shove top, you move your wards there, you start your jungle on that side, you try and jungle on the other side. Uh, that's what a lot of teams do when they're trying to secure a strong split push, and that's what Optic needs to do. All right, and then of course, inversely, Mark, you elected for TSM to win, the, or for uh, Optic to win the game, so you have to give me TSM's win conditions. So first, I want a strong 5v5 team comp, maybe 4v4, depending on how much the split push game works out, but there's almost no way that this is a slow game, both or fast game. Both these teams are very <laughs> slow, excuse me. Uh, a lot of base races and back doors breaking out, so make sure you have the better 5v5 comp to play around the objectives, and then camp top lane, because we saw, even though Dokla did get the GP, or the, the York against the GP, once he got camped and kind of shut down, he lost complete split push pressure. So you can attack that strategy early and often and not give him the chance to really ramp up on the split push. That's interesting. The second part of both your win conditions kind of, you know, implies that there will be conflict in the top lane yeah. if uh, they are followed one-to-one. -one. We'll see that matchup, or rather how that matchup pl 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 pans out. Later in the day. Thank you for your help, Mark. I did. Uh, but now we're stepping away. When we return, we'll break down game one and look at some of the surprises of the split so far. All that and some more after the break. Welcome back to the NALCS Countdown. We're about 12 minutes away from game one. Back in week three, you both made your bets on how teams would fare based on the first third of the split. So I wanted to check in, see how you guys are doing. And one bet in particular stood out to me. All right, well, then for our final over-under, we're going to jump, jump rather to the bottom of the standings. We find Cloud9. I'm putting the line at nine and a half wins. What do you guys think? Can they do it? Way under. Way under? What? How, how far under, Mark? Yeah, like, how far way, way under. Way under. What's way? Point? I don't know. Oh, what do you think, Jad, on nine I'm, and a half? I'm predicting them at nine, so I have to go a little bit a under. A little bit. Even if Mark is way they under. They have to win eight of their next 13 games. Yeah, right? I think it's possible. Way it's under. Possible, though, I mean, right? I'm, not, way I'm under. not wrong yet. I just, you want to qualify we way under? Yeah, we never really said what that meant. <laughs> Half game? It's more of an emotion <laughs> than a number. Uh-huh, you know, uh-huh. Yeah. So you, wait, you, think, you think nine is way under? They're I'm not wrong yet. Like, they're at nine. They need to so. win a game this weekend. Also, this wasn't even a third of the way through the split. This was after five games. Dan. All right, true. So, so just before more. a third of the way through the split. Yeah. But let's run through some of these. We have Team Look at 12 okay. and a half. Mark, you said over. They can still do that they if they go 2 0 this week. Jat, you Pretty said possible. under. So you need them to drop one of their games. I this still week. have that a one, chance to get all of these. That one's coming in under the wire. But it a won't game happen. Against, <laughs> it probably won't. But they, a game against Echo Fox here at the top of the day, Team Liquid could definitely drop that and uh, give Jap the correct answer there. TSM at 11 and a half. Mark, you were optimistic with the over. 
Yeah, I was yeah. definitely drinking That's the TSM. That's actually impossible now. I was drinking the TSM Kool-Aid for a little while when I had like, yeah. like 12 pitchers. So Jap's already yeah. out, out front here, 1-0, because yeah. we know that that one's locked in. Echo Fox at 12 and a half. They're also sitting at nine wins currently. So you both were correct by calling under yeah. We're, yeah. we're most one. likely going to get two and two, both of us. Both of us going to get C9 uh, uh, wrong. Uh, I'm going to get You're going to get them more wrong, I'm going to get yeah. TSM wrong. I'm going to get Team Liquid right. You're going to get that wrong. And uh, we're going to be tied. There's no such thing as more wrong. There is. 50-50. There yeah. might be. 50-50. There no, might be context. a more wrong. <laughs> Throw the context out the window. Way under uh, and kind of under. That's, that's some Let's blow. be honest, though. I think, I think the fact that, yes, way under and kind of under, again, should just kind of clue people into yeah. craziness or the impressiveness yeah. that, that Cloud9 is displaying here on the back half of the split. Yeah, and tons of roster swaps along the way, too, even happening last week did result in a win. But just how yeah. uh, volatile it feels like their season has been. And but, they've been the best team in the last nine games. Yep. Be, beating, team, beating Team Liquid, right? Taking yeah. down the number one team in the league as of right now. Cloud9 were just one of the surprises of the split. Outside of being way, way wrong about Cloud9, uh, what else has stood out to you two? I am very surprised at how successful FlyQuest has been okay. and continues to be. Wild Turtle meta. I said it. Yeah, all that Yasuo yeah. brand he's yeah. played has really <laughs> yeah. stepped up the game. Woo. But in actuality, this team for me was 10th in my preseason power rankings. And now with two games left in the regular season, they have a 4.7% chance of finishing first. That's insane to me. Yeah, not that it's gonna happen, but just that it's, it, it's it even a possible, <laughs> it's a possibility. It's not gonna happen, but it's a possibility. <laughs> right. And for a team that you would project to finish 10th, to even yeah. have that possibility like, in the ninth hey, week Hey, they'll be is right on the outside of the playoffs. Right. Best case scenario. Oh, yeah. But, wow. I mean, yeah, sitting at 9-7 and seven right now. Mark, what about you? What's been a surprise? For me, it's got to be the base races. Just given how the season started with all the crazy funnel strategies and the mages bottom, and then we went through this kind of two- to three-week burst where FlyQuest and Optic just backdoored everybody in the league, it felt like. Uh, and then Echo Fox got in on it, picking on TSM, and... It was just insane to see this start happening so close together and in upset situations a lot of times where it felt like the favorite was losing games due to this. Yeah, I mean, split pushing did really And the Marksman TP the end of the game. <laughs> it's always been he's contributed to it. People I'm, were more willing to suicide in like it's probably something to do with teams being so much about the 20 to 25 minute games early on in the season that there's some rust when getting back to playing that macro game. Right. Also, like a bunch of the, the game changes that happened, less health on Nexus turrets. But even with all of that, there's still so many base races. Yeah, yeah. So, right. so often it was the team with the gold lead that was losing the game because of that overcommittal yeah. or something and then the base race happening. Take to Twitter, though. Tell us what your biggest surprise of the split was thus far. Tweet to LOL Esports with the hashtag NALCS, and we'll review some of yours tomorrow. Now let's take a look at this week's mic check that takes a listen at some of the lighter moments from Week 8. This is going on uh, the mic uh, check. Mic check. No, there's no way. <laughs> this is just I'm, I'm, no way. pure <laughs> unadulterated <laughs> idiocy. <laughs> Nice. Jensen on uh, Omega inting today. <laughs> Omega. I still don't understand how we can have 62 ping in solo queue. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <having time. laughs> Every week this happens. Fall. I, I mean, like it's a crisis right now. <laughs> why don't people just go like electrocute everything? Like, why don't you just go electrocute Alistar? Oh. Because you're very squishy. Yeah. Just go electrocute Tom. Auto uh, queue, auto. To lobby? <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're squishy if they're dead, does it? And in this but. Played against Cody Sun again. Stop. And I lost again. Stop. So I'm zero and five versus Cody Sun. Hog. So if you do the math, <laughs> we lost. Whoa, he's done. Go, 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 go. 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 Okay, okay. All right. No, 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 no. Nice. Help me, help me, me. I'm coming, 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 coming. I'm coming too, dude. I'm not helping you. <laughs> nice, guys. All right, nice. Finish, finish. I need help, I need help, I need help. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Finish and move left, 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 Nice, awesome. nice, 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 nice. Can you especially turn me down for Fabian? Oh yeah, this guy, voice. can you just mute him? <laughs> just straight mute. Now there's a bug here. We cannot talk. What's going on? There's a fly on our face. 
It's on top of you, Trevor. Oh, wait. wait, we cannot talk about the game, right? Got him. Down. Oh. Wait, all you guys say eat me when I'm Tom Ken? <laughs> I've been watching that same thing. You guys aren't in danger, you just... Once the one, one spell hits you, yeah. and you're like, eat me! Come on! I'm dying! Go, 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 Ken. DP up, DP up. KDA, KDA, KDA. KDA is more important. Reddit will like me. Oh. Oh. Some light moments in week eight, but things are about to get a heck of a lot more serious here in week nine, as again, we race for playoffs. Ahead of our first game, though, Doublelift is feeling confident in the Fox matchup in typical Doublelift style. Echovax was just really willing to do random stuff topside. I think Demonte really wants to, like, he wants to try too hard to prove that he's good, so he just does really stupid stuff all the time. Dardock also suffers from that. Actually, you know, all three of those players suffer from that. I mean, sometimes they look really good, like Cooney and Dardock and Demonte look really, really good styling on people, and then sometimes they look mega boosted because they're the kind of players that'll just, like, go for a play because they can and not because it's good. Um, and so, you know, that can be, like, a really big strength because uh, people usually aren't looking out for the same thing as, like, Dardock and Hooney are looking out for. And uh, the downside to it is just that they might, like, chain feed. So I think Echo Fox is a really hard team to play against because they're so unexpected with what they're doing. The bright side is that their bot lane is really easy to play against. So I am really looking forward to playing against Lost and Smoothie. Um, I think we can really take over the game. Uh, he's got a lot more articulate with his trash talk, but you still yeah. see these moments where his eyes go really wide, like, he's I'm like, about Ooh. to roast somebody. <laughs> I yeah. love it. But it's I because it, it comes right off a compliment, too. So yeah. he's thinking, well, this will land a lot more honestly if right. I say it this way. Yeah, I mean, he's got to give credit where credit's due yeah. and then smack people down and let them know that he's still the best. In that first matchup, though, you've got two teams who met in the semifinals last split, both looking to prove they deserve a top spot amid hiccups in week eight. We can't forget those. Yeah, and Echo Fox has been struggling a little bit ever since the trade. It was their first 0 2 week last week, but in their wins, it's been a little hard fought. They've been 3 and 3 since the trade, and it still feels like this team has a lot of the same strengths and weaknesses that they've had for basically their inception this year. Yeah, and I do feel like even though they've switched out three players, they still live and die by Hooney and Dardock. So many people are saying there's games where Hooney has a lot of deaths and they lose, but last week it was really Dardock. He had the Lee Sin game into a poppy where he died five times, and he had the Aatrox jungle game where he also died five times, which was almost double what anyone else on his team had so when this team is good it's often because Jardock is smashing but he fell behind in all of their games last week and if they want to move and make this push for playoff by it's got to be Dardock playing well. He's got to turn it on today. Now, Team Liquid, they come into the matchup slightly wounded from their first loss on the back half of the split against Cloud9. Yeah, but they're still considered the favorites, I think, unanimously. Yeah. And it, it's a really interesting one because they have improved from spring, definitely, but they're not untouchable in any sense of the word. And they're not definitely not the most dominant first place unanimous team we've ever seen. Uh, and that's really why it feels so strange that they're not like the 17 and one Immortals or the TSMs and C9s yeah. of old. And last split, they actually surged to get into fourth and then crushed through the playoffs. So they would hope that they are in a better position this split, obviously going into the last week, 79% chance to either get first or be tied with a team and get a head-to-head -head tiebreaker to give them first. So they're yep. most likely getting that playoff by and most likely being, is that a foldy sheet? Now that was your shirt. That was your Jada's right shirt. It's <laughs> still <laughs> sitting under no, the desk. We don't ever clean the desk. <laughs> we're we just pull that back after up. After we're done with you want to pull this up? Yeah, yeah. All right, here we, we go. We can use this after all of my week. Well, but I also things. wrote on it. I don't know if you yeah. remember because uh, Jada was, Jat was, was right, but Mark yeah. was writer. It's we'll gonna have see. to be flipped we'll around. We'll see about the predictions after that. I've been keeping. I don't know why. We don't clean. We don't clean. Everything just goes under the desk. Picked it accidentally, so we're gonna put this back under the desk where it will stay probably for another year until we find. Another, Another time when I was I right. Don't know. All right, well, we've only got a minute 30 left, so let me get you guys' win conditions for this first game of the day. Mark, you're going to take Echo Fox. Yeah, copy C9. That looked like a real good <laughs> oh, game okay. plan where they oh, yeah, just, just go 7 0 in the first seven minutes. <laughs> well, the strategy of getting a lot of aggressive picks around the mid and jungle yeah. and hard camping Po Belter is the strategy I'm okay. going for. It's very tempting to say play to Hooney and try and abuse Impact, who sometimes can fall behind in some of the matchups. That usually doesn't result in wins. And what I like about the C9 strategy is you get to contain Doublelift without 
confronting him. He mm. can go in the bot lane, but if his mid lane gets completely blown open, he can't pressure as hard as he wants because the roams and collapses can come down, and you're not so far away that you're all the way up in the top side. So I actually do like this strategy, if you can execute it, of punishing Poe Belter explicitly. How does TL stay number one? I think a lot of it has to do with shutting down Dardock. They don't have first pick because they're red side, so you either pick Lee Sin into Kindred or you ban Kindred and try and get a later counter pick. Oftentimes, Echo Fox waits till the second phase to pick their jungler, and you can exploit that. All right, there you have it. Win conditions for game one of the day. With that, we're going to toss it out to the casters to get us into the games.